Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So today's video is in continuation to my Azure Databricks interview questions play series and this video is part 3 in that. Before moving ahead, do remember to like, share and subscribe to this particular channel. So let's move ahead and see what is the question do we have for today. So the first question is what is the default partition size that you have uh, in Databricks Spark, right? So this is also a very common asked, uh, commonly asked question and the you know straight away answer to, is, uh, to this question is that the Spark by default it creates one partition for every 128 MB of file. So what does that mean? It means that each of your partition is actually 128 MB in size. Now this question can be asked other way around as well. So someone might ask you that uh, if you are trying to read let's say a file of this particular size let's say 2 GB of the size then in that case how many partition will it create right. So this is also uh, you know uh, one of the way or trick of asking the question. So you should be able to understand that one partition is 128 MB so 2 GB in default it will create 20 partitions. Right, and there is an uh, you know option as well to see uh, the maximum uh, partition size. You can uh, see it through this particular command which you see on the screen right now: spark.config.get maximum partition in bytes. So in bytes, it is this much bytes of partition which is equivalent to 128 MB of file size. So this is a very basic and as well as very important questions that you should know. Now the second question is what are the default number of partitions that are created. So default number of partitions are 200 right and uh, this is also something uh, you should know that 200 shuffle partitions are by default created you can definitely change it. So you do have options parameters to change these both of these number of partitions and the size of the partitions you can go ahead and change it if required. And the third question that is commonly asked is have you worked on Databricks SQL? What is it about? What like they, they want to know like whether you have worked on Databricks SQL or not, right? So uh, typically whenever you have uh, Databricks workspace, you have a data engineering workspace, you have a ML workspace, you have a SQL workspace. So this question is typically on the SQL workspace. So in fact, uh, I would say even if you have not used it, you can go ahead and try it out right once because it is really very easy and it adds a lot of benefits. So Databricks SQL is essentially designed for the data analysts, right? So data engineering um, folks can actually go ahead and create some delta tables and those delta tables can be actually used by data analysts in the Databricks SQL to create visualizations on top of it right and they can run ad hoc queries on those delta tables that you have created and they can create those visualization they can create dashboards they can share those dashboards as well so let me go to the portal and actually show you that so if you see on the left hand side you have data engineering machine learning and sql right so most of the um, like if you are uh, typically working in data engineering side you must be using this data engineering workspace if you go and select sql option over here Right, you can actually you will actually see that you land into the page where you have completely different UI. It is typically built for data analysts, and in fact, I have created uh, this is your Databricks SQL UI. You can go ahead write your queries. There is a SQL editor. You can create dashboards. You can have alerts as well. So. Uh, completely on this particular topic I have made one video of Databricks SQL workspace right you can go ahead check out Databricks hands-on tutorial in that uh, Databricks SQL analytics workspace this particular uh, video is available which explains completely about the Databricks SQL part so once you go through it it will be really easy for you to understand in case you want to you can go ahead and check this out check this video out as well okay now let me go back to the slides now this is one question and just after this uh, in case you have uh, knowledge or experience in databricks sql this is the question that will flow what are sql endpoints how are they different from clusters now typically if you would have seen my previous video you would know the answer Databricks SQL endpoints are specifically designed for data analysts. See, when you talk about data engineers, they should know about what's happening inside Spark, but that is not required for data analysts, right? And Databricks SQL is typically designed for data analysts. 
So in this case, instead of Databricks clusters, you have Databricks SQL endpoints where they do not have to provide configurations of what virtual machines to use. So those are called SQL endpoints. SQL endpoints are nothing but clusters only, but uh, you do not have to you know, provide configurations on how many codes, how many worker nodes, how many driver, like what driver configuration, how many worker nodes are supposed to be used. You just select, uh, you know, from large, extra large, small, extra small, like these are the configurations you have to select from when uh, talking about SQL endpoints. In fact, let me go back to the portal and show you again. So if you see this Databricks SQL, you will see SQL endpoints, right? So these are clusters. If you uh, select on this, uh, the one which I have, you will see cluster size 2x small, right? That, that That's the only thing. Uh, there is no configuration that you have to provide. Let's click on create SQL endpoint. You will see I can give any XYZ name and the cluster size is actually this. You know, 2x small, x small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2x large, 3x large. This is just you have to provide. You don't have to do anything than a simple auto scaling and auto stop. That's all and you can go ahead and create it. But this is not the case when you talk about Databricks clusters, right? So that is why the SQL endpoint concept is there because for data analysts, they do not have, uh, you know, that level of expertise to, you know, um, check regarding the uh, what kind of clusters they should use, right? Because their uh, area of expertise is not that. Now, let me go back to the PPT and let me check out the other question. So what do you mean by interactive and job cluster? So this is also one of the very commonly asked question. What do you mean by interactive and job clusters? So when you say interactive clusters, if I go to Databricks UI right now and I create a cluster, that is an interactive cluster, right? And if I create a job, if I schedule a job and I provide the cluster configurations while scheduling the job, that is essentially a job cluster, right? Both these clusters can be created by UI like, uh, you know, through the portal or through the API as well. So in fact, in my previous videos, I have shown how to create clusters through API as well. So these are the two different types of clusters. So first you should understand what are interactive clusters and what are job clusters. So interactive clusters, you can directly go ahead, create through UI and you can start using them. But job clusters are specifically designed for the jobs, right? You create a job and then you, you know, uh, specify the configurations that are called job clusters. Interactive clusters are anyway more expensive than job clusters that uh, you should know. Like interactive clusters are definitely more expensive. So whenever you uh, create a job, always a job cluster is recommended. Like let's say you want to, you want to schedule a job, a job cluster is recommended for it. So whenever that job is scheduled, uh, you know, automatically the cluster will get the machines for you, do your job and then done, right? It, it is not shared between the jobs. But when you talk about interactive cluster, if you are going for high concurrency cluster, in that case, they can be shared as well, right? You can give, um, you know, you can run your multiple jobs on the same cluster and all, right? Now, let's go to the portal and see the clusters. Now, here I go, I have to switch back to the data uh, science and engineering workspace for the cluster. And if I click, click on compute over here, you can see if I go ahead and click on create cluster, right? This is basically the interactive cluster that I'm creating. There are different modes as well. We are going to discuss on those modes also. This is just your uh, normal interactive cluster. But when you click on this job cluster, uh, this is specifically designed for your job. So even when you go to the job and you try to schedule any of your notebook, right? So let me, uh, let's, let's click on any, uh, you know, any notebook random I'm going to choose a notebook. So let's say auto loader. Now, if I have parameters I can specify, I can, you know, create and the, this cluster configuration that I specify over here, right? So this is nothing but a job cluster. This is essentially a job cluster. So I hope you understand the difference between job cluster and the normal clusters that we use. But for any production workload, uh, you should always go ahead and use the job cluster because there should be no sharing of the machines. And this, at the same time, there will be no cache problem or no problems as such when you go ahead and use your job cluster. So this was pretty much that I have wanted to cover in this video. Thank you so much and do remember to like, share and subscribe to this video.